Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. We've been talking about the various deceptions from the Bible. And Christ warns us in Matthew chapter 24, he says four times, four times in that chapter, watch out for deceptions. And there's another deception. It's the, and I'd like to explain what is the unrighteous mammon. First of all, what is a mammon? So our program today is going to concern the question about what is the unrighteous mammon? Now, we have two important booklets that we'd love to share with you today. These are free. The first is, why do you observe Sunday? And it says the Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. Which day did Christ and the apostles observe? Which day did Paul teach Gentile converts to observe? How did the day become changed from the seventh day to the first day of the week? Sunday is the first day of the week. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 commands us to prove all things. I ask you to please read this booklet with an open mind. If you are already right, honest investigation will but confirm it. If you are wrong, you should want to know it. The second booklet is The Kingdom of God. What does that mean to you? If you're walking down the street, you're perhaps going to church one day, and somebody walks up to you, oh, you got a Bible, you're going to church. What is the kingdom of God? Could you explain it to that person with or without a Bible? Could you? Well, this booklet explains it. Each, uh, each booklet would take maybe 15, 20 minutes to read, and you could read it along with your Bible. Never read biblical literature that's without studying it in your Bible. We want to prove all things. So we're going to start out with Luke chapter 16, and we're going to understand what unrighteous mammon is. Now let's look in Luke chapter 16, and we'll start in verse 1. <clears throat> now, uh, two questions come up. What is the unrighteous mammon? And who is Jesus directing this question to? And he, that's Jesus, said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him. This is, the, this is this parable of the dishonest steward. So he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of you? Give an account of your stewardship. In other words, open up the books. I want to see the books. For you may... You may be no longer steward. You might lose your job. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord takes away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig, and to beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they... Well, we're going to find out who they are. They may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's 
debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much do you owe unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. So he was going to give this fellow uh, another bill, and he was going to charge him only for 50 measures of oil. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take your bill and write four score. That's 80. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Now, I know there's a lot of questions that you have right now, but let's just keep reading because we're going to answer all of these questions. So let's keep reading. He who is faithful <coughs> and that which is least is faithful <coughs> also in much. And he who is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If, therefore, you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now watch who is listening in here. Who's, and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things. They were eavesdropping. They were listening in as he was telling his disciples. And they derided him. They made fun of him. And he said unto them, You are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts, for which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Okay, let's start doing some explanations. Jesus here was directing this parable to the Pharisees. He was telling it to his disciples, but it was being directed to the Pharisees. And why did the master commend the unjust steward? Because he had done wisely. Now, if we look up that word wisely, it's actually shrewd, shrewdly. He, he was very shrewd. He was crafty. See? So, he says, you're pretty, pretty sharp, aren't you? You see, you're pretty crafty. Uh, you're pretty shrewd. So that was a, a commendation that he gave this man because he knew he was going to lose his job and he wanted to endear himself to this man's customers. So he says, okay, take your bill and instead of 100, write 50. And he says to the second one, instead of 100, you write 80. So you owe my master 80 uh, barrels of what, whatever. And Jesus Christ points that out, that we must handle the unrighteous mammon in a righteous way. Now, what is unrighteous mammon? I looked up the word mammon, and uh, the word mammon is wealth. It's uh, in Strong's Concordance, number 3125.
26, it is wealth. It is personified. It is avarice. It is deified, which means it's godly or ungodly, if you will. So, the question was, what should we do with this ungodly wealth? Did you know that our dollar bill today is unrighteous mammon? Did you know that? Why is that? Well, if you take the dollar bill to a bank, uh, what are you going to get for it? You could get change, which amounts up to a dollar. Now, before 1964, you could have bought a silver dollar across the counter of any bank. For a one dollar, you could have bought a silver dollar. So you had 75% silver, or some coins were 90% silver for one dollar. Now today, silver is much higher than that. You would have to spend 20 to 25 dollars to get a silver dollar. So what happened? Well, what happened is our, our money is called money. We call it money. It's not money. They're certificates of debt, which means if I owe you a dollar, I give you a dollar. That's the certificate of debt. You will take it because you could turn around and give it to another person. You could use it to buy something, buy goods and services with it. Well, back around 1913, the Federal Reserve was created uh, to print money. And they did that. They printed money. And along about the wartime, around 1943, uh, President Roosevelt called all that silver and gold back in, especially the gold, and he gave $20 for each gold piece. And right after he got all the gold back, he raised the price to $35. So people took a beating with gold. Today, gold is over $1,000 an ounce. It's about $1,200 an ounce today. Our money is valueless, has lost much of its value. In 1941, you, the 1941 in that economy compared to today's economy of 2015, that 1941 dollar will purchase today three cents, three cents worth of goods and services. Can you begin to see how our dollar has depreciated, how the value is going down? Can you begin to see prices going up in the supermarket? Every time I go to the supermarket, it seems like the raising prices over and over again. They put new prices on. Even the things up on sale have a higher price than they used to have. Do you remember when you got three cans of tuna for a dollar? Today, you'll get one can of tuna for a dollar. Well, we're coming back very shortly. Please don't go away. We, we want to continue explaining the unrighteous mammon. We'll be right back.
Attention users of the blood thinning drug Xarelto. If you or a loved one has been hospitalized or died from serious internal bleeding after taking Xarelto, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call the Sentinel Group now. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke, or even death. Our network of experienced attorneys are ready to help fight for you. You won't pay a thing until your case is settled. Call the Sentinel Group now. Don't wait. Are you looking for new car insurance? Quote Rhino Auto Insurance will save you time and money by doing all the work for you and connect you directly to the plan matching your driving needs. Call Quote Rhino Auto now. Quote Rhino Auto and their insurance partners can save you up to $350 per year. Call Quote Rhino Auto now. There are a lot of important things in life to spend your time on. Searching for the best auto insurance should not be one of them. Call Quote Rhino Auto Insurance now and start saving today. Have you or a loved one suffered complications after uterine surgery from the use of a power morselator? If so, call the Sentinel Group now. You may be entitled to significant compensation. The FDA estimates that 1 in 350 women undergoing a myo or hysterectomy have unsuspected sarcoma or cancer in the uterus. The Sentinel Group's experienced network of attorneys have years of experience fighting big medical companies and is ready to fight for you. So if you've developed uterine cancer, call the Sentinel Group now for a free confidential consultation. Welcome back to the program. You know, in 1964, President Johnson had called all of the silver in. He had stopped, they stopped minting silver, and, uh, and the last coins that were minted were 1964 of 90% silver. Today, uh, and also Nixon, President Nixon, before President Johnson, had closed the gold window. Uh, before President Nixon closed the gold window, foreign countries could come and buy one ounce of gold for $35. Now, France had loaded up ships with gold to go back to France and they were turning in American dollars and trading them for gold. So President Nixon says, enough of this. We're going to close the gold window. We're not going to sell any more gold. Well, we're about depleted in Fort Knox. I don't know how much gold they have there, but I expect that if there is any gold there, it belongs to other people and not to the United States government. Okay, what, what's, what's the reason all this is happening? The reason that all this is happening comes down to one word, and that word is sin. What is sin? The Bible says sin is the transgression of the law. Whoever transgresses the law also sins for sin is the transgression of the law. You can look that up for yourselves in 1 John chapter 3 in verse 4. Now Jesus also mentions in Matthew 6 verse 24, I'll just refer to it, you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot. You can't serve God and unrighteous riches. Now, our nation is being punished today. That's right. Because we have committed the very same sins that ancient Israel committed, and they were punished. Do you think, does anyone think that we are any better than ancient Israel? If ancient Israel, by the Bible, had broken God's laws, and sinned and were punished, were taken away into captivity by other foreign nations. And 10 of the tribes got lost. They're called the lost 10 tribes of Israel. Actually, we know where they 
got to today. But two and, two and one half tribes were, came back to the land of Israel. The Jewish people came back. They only comprise two and one half tribes. There's 10 tribes left that were taken away by the Assyrians in 705 BC. Now, Judah, the two and a half tribes in the south, who had their, uh, had their capital in Jerusalem, were taken away by two invasions of Nebuchadnezzar. One was 605 BC, and the other was 585 BC. They were taken away to Babylon. They returned after 70 years. The 10 nations in the north, the, what we call the 10 lost tribes of Israel, never returned to their land. Now, I want to look here at Leviticus chapter 25, and I want to show you why they were taken away as captives and what's going to also happen to this great nation here. And here we are in chapter 25. And the Lord spoke unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof, but in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. That which grows of its own accord of your harvest you shall not reap, neither shall you gather the grapes of your vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. Well, where, how did the people eat? Well, let's read it. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for, for your servant and for your maid and for your hired servant and for your stranger that sojourns with you. Now, let me explain that to you so we, we can understand it. Farmers today are beginning to realize that the land has to rest, and they call it going fallow. The land goes fallow. It doesn't, you, you don't sow it, you don't reap it, you don't plow it, you just let it rest, rest up. And in those days, when the land rested up, there was no need to put in artificial fertilizers. There was no need to put in poisons to poison the insects. Insects will only eat deficient plants. That's right. Insects will eat deficient plants. Healthy plants will grow and insects won't bother them. So we, we stop obeying God. God shows us the right way to live and we disobey God and we want to do our own thing. And as a result of it, we're eating food today that's poisoned by these chemicals, these artificial fertilizers, which are not good for you, and also the insecticides are not good for you. Wondering why we have so many sick people today, we're eating sick food. So God knows what's best for us. Let's, let's look here and uh, we'll continue in the Leviticus chapter 25. And you shall number seven Sabbaths of years unto you. So we have 49 years. Seven times seven years is 49. And the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you 49 years. Then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month. This is the day of atonement. In the day of atonement, 
shall you make the trumpet sound throughout your land. And you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. Now, this was a wonderful idea. Let me just explain it to you. This 50th year, if you were a slave, you were set free. If you had been, if you had sold your property, your, your home, your farm, you would receive it back again. The, the, the land would, that your farm would be yours, would be your generations after you would also own that piece of land. And it was a new system. It was a system that worked. And today we have people losing their houses due to foreclosure and they can't get it back. They've lost it. And we have pe homeless people. We didn't have homeless people in, back in the days of the Bible. If a man couldn't afford something, he would work. He would work for another, for another man. And he would be set free in the seventh year, and he would be set free also in the 50th year of the Jubilee. Now, uh, this is God's plan. God, we have gotten so far away from God's plan, and we wonder why uh, we're in the trouble that we are. We are bankrupt. This nation is bankrupt. This nation cannot pay its bills. This nation cannot even pay the interest on its bills. It keeps borrowing more and more and more. Well, let's go back to the booklets. I'd like you to call in right now. Uh, we'll have somebody at the telephone to take your order. Why do you observe Sunday? The Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. The kingdom of God, what does that mean to you? You could have a DVD of this program for free. We have an interactive Bible study every Saturday at 1 o'clock at 1701 East Missouri. Please come and join us. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.